Mark Ray Mundy for ESPN back with you today with special guests. There is uh, so, some news, a lot of things going on in their world right now. Of course, Jake Paul and his business partner, Nikisa Badarian, co-founder of Most God Promotions. Uh, so Wednesday, Jake, you announced on social media that you had sent the termination letter to Tommy Fury. That fight, August 6th, MSG that was scheduled is no longer happening. Can you explain exactly what happened? Yeah, basically, uh, this is typical Tommy Fury behavior of pulling out of fights, being scared to fight, coming up with any excuse possible. Um, about a week ago, he apparently went to the London Heathrow Airport and was denied access into the United States. Um, and then after that, basically went radio silent. All he had to do was go to the embassy. We didn't hear from him. His team didn't hear from him. And he made no effort to try and get his visa to enter into the United States to make the fight happen. I said, I'll give you until Wednesday to, to figure this out and didn't hear from him at all. There was no effort put in. Didn't I, I personally DM'd him saying, yo, I have people ready to get you your visa inside the embassy. I have the best lawyers. Um, he didn't you, you know, look at, even look at my DM. And normally he looks at all of my DMs that I send him. Um, he, he replies to all my stories. And so he literally went into hiding and um, had to send him the termination notice. Okay. So I, I want to ask you this and, and maybe Nikisa can, can chime in too. So he gets caught up at, at London Heathrow airport. Of course, he was going to be coming to the press conference that you guys had scheduled at MSG to promote the fight. Jake can kind of speak to, we understand he was caught, you know, stopped at London Heathrow Airport, but we have no evidence of that. And Jake can yeah. speak about how he views yeah, that. Yeah, like we don't even know if that actually happened, right? You have to think he's one of the UK's biggest stars and he went to an airport and there's no pictures of him there. There's no footage of him there. There's nothing. And he was apparently there for the whole entire day trying to figure it out. Apparently, we don't even know if he actually got denied entry into the United States. Okay, so that so that's kind of different than what, of course, his his team has been saying. So if, if he didn't do that, what do you think the, the situation is? Like if, if he didn't actually go to the airport and try to get into the country, if he's not being denied in, what is the issue? The issue is his ball sack not being <laughs> big enough. You know, like he, he doesn't have the gonads. He doesn't want the fight. He doesn't want the smoke. You know, he sees me putting people down. He knows how strong, powerful I am. And quite frankly, I, I don't think, they're, they're a stupid family, right? Look what they've done for themselves. And they have a lot of boxing experience and they go back and look at my fight and um, th they see that right hand of God. And that's that. So, so you guys are under the impression that, you know, maybe there really wasn't any kind of paperwork issue or visa issue that he just did not want to come to the States and do the fight. I think, I think there definitely can be a, issue of him getting a simple visa into the country but we certainly didn't get a sense not from queensberry and frank warren they were they were making all the efforts possible to help us with this situation but we certainly didn't get a sense from tommy or his personal representatives that they were being diligent in figuring out how to solve this problem for what would be tommy's biggest payday you know times 10 in his career he, he released a statement on wednesday on social media and he said that you know, if the, if the fight moved to, uh, I think he said, neutral country, some place that he said he can get into, that he would be down to fight. Has there been any discussion about that at all? No, I mean, there, there hasn't. And, you know, of course, he's going to say that to save face. You know, in that same message, it said, I'll fight anytime, anyone, any place. Except the U.S., you know, and um, he, he's just a joke to me. He, he's a joke to the boxing community. And at this point in time, th there's no reason for me to even try to put on a Tommy Fury event. You know, now we've we've gotten a real professional boxer in Hasim Rahman Jr. who's going to step up to the plate and fight me, who's better than Tommy Fury, uh, who's bigger than Tommy Fury. And so, you know, the, the Tommy Fury discussion isn't even really applicable anymore. If his promoters want to handle all the logistics and pay me my 15 million dollars to go to Europe and fight then maybe we could start the discussion. I want to ask you about, about Hasim Rahman Jr. a little bit, but, but first, just want to put the Tommy Fury stuff to bed. You said maybe if they set up a fight, you would do it, but as of right now, MVP, your promotion is, is out of the Tommy Fury business. 
Yeah, look, I mean, if he truly can't get into the U.S., the, the European business just isn't as lucrative. There's less pay-per-view, um, less of a ticket gate, less sponsorships. Um, and so, you know, this is the show business. At the end of the day, we're going to make way more money by doing it in the U.S. And Tommy is always overpricing himself. Um, he's probably going to expect the same amount of money to fight me in Europe as he is in the United States, which just isn't possible. Um, so if he's going to be realistic and his promoters want to put on the event, I can just fly in and not have to worry about any of this because I'm sick and tired of him wasting my time. And for, for the next fight, if we do fight, I'm putting in a clause where he has to put $500,000 into escrow. And if he doesn't do the fight, then I automatically get the money because I'm sick of him wasting my time. He's wasting my team time. I have a, I have a staff of 25 people that I feed, you know, and, and he, he's wasting all of our times and it's, it's annoying. We're sick of it. I think okay, Jake, so would go, Jake would go to the UK. Jake would go to the Middle East. Jake would go to Australia and fight Tommy Fury if he had a guaranteed purse that resulted in the same amount of proceeds to him as if he was fighting in the US. I'm 100% convinced that Jake would do that in an instant if such an opportunity presented itself. Tommy Fury has to be more realistic about what he's able to generate himself outside of the US when Jake's not putting up the money. Fair enough. So let's move on from Tommy Fury. Let's talk about Hasim Rahman Jr. Because uh, this, is, this is a heavyweight boxer, a pro boxer. This Jake is, is a departure from some of the previous opponents. And, and what I mean by that is your previous opponents have all had some kind of uh, notoriety outside the boxing world, whether it was Tyron Woodley or Ben Askren or Nate Robinson, even Tommy Fury, who we were going to fight was a, you know, a reality show star in the UK on Love Island. Asim Rahman is just a straight up boxer, nowhere near the profile that the, these other opponents have had. What made you choose him as the opponent and on short notice? Well, for me, I've just wanted to fight a professional boxer since knocking out Tyron Woodley. Um, and I've been trying to do that since Tommy Fury pulled out the first time. I want to check that off the list. I want to show people that I can knock out a professional boxer. Um, and so Hasim Rahman Jr. is a heavyweight. He's bigger than Tommy Fury, stronger than Tommy Fury. His dad was the heavyweight champion of the world. He has more amateur fights than Tommy Fury. So this is a harder fight in my opinion i want to challenge myself i want to show the fans yo this kid is i'm crazy i'm i'm literally crazy there there is no reason that i should be taking this fight uh nakisa told me he's like i don't think the risk is worth worth the reward you know the, the risk doesn't justify the reward and my brother said the same thing to me he's like bro i don't know if you should do this like what if he accidentally knocks you out like you just got knocked out by this kid who no one really knows about and I'm like, I don't care. I'm, I'm crazy. I want to prove to the boxing world that I'm a real dog, which I am. And I'm going to go in there against this 12 and one kid who's bigger than Tommy Fury, faster than Tommy Fury, all of these things. And I'm going to put on the performance of a lifetime and just shut everyone up. And just, just to be clear, the kid is 31 years old. The kid has real knockout power and has grown up in boxing from the time he was a baby. So what Jake is planning to do here is, in my mind, unheard of for someone at his level. We certainly looked at opponents that were 5-0, and 6-0, and 7-0, and but Jake was adamant that he had to raise the stakes above and beyond Tommy Fury to shut up the naysayers once and for all. Yeah, I, I want to ask you that, Nikisa, because, um, you know, I feel like, I feel like, uh, and, and you guys know this, I haven't been one of the, the critics who have been saying, you know, go fight a boxer, go do this. I understand you know, what you guys have done. I think that what you guys have done as far as marketing and telling, you know, the story of Jake's career has been great. This is a departure from that. You know, this is, this is a, you know, short notice fight against a pro boxer who's more experienced, who's bigger than Jake, who's, uh, you know, the, one of the, one of the, one of the critics uh, that I've said, or a lot of the critics have said, you know, Jake's only fighting guys that are older. He's only 31 years old. So older how, how dangerous smaller. is this fight? And, and why didn't you want Jake to do it? Thank you, sir. O older and smaller is what the critics have said. The reality right. is Jake walks around anywhere between 194 and 196 pounds naturally. And so most of the fights he's had, if you look at what Tyron weighs naturally, Tyron's about 189, 190. So it wasn't a smaller guy. In this instance, Jake is fighting a much bigger man, a, a man with longer reach, with more power, with more experience. And I don't see the benefit of doing this fight at this stage, given all the other opportunities that are there for Jake, right? He can prove himself against a six and O boxer or a five and O boxer, you know, someone who's just 
been there to build their record to lose to someone like Jake. That's not what he wanted. He wanted to truly challenge himself. Him and his coaching team believe that they can beat Haseem Rahman Jr. They believe they can finish Haseem Rahman Jr. So I can only give the best advice that I can, you know, give in my mind, but he as the fighter and as the ultimate promoter of his own events has to make the decision. So I support whatever he wants to do. When I leave this sport, you know, I want there to be a, a remembrance of me being willing to fight anyone, anytime, any place, and truly living up to that. I want to I wanna be an example for young fighters around the world, you know, who aren't taking hard fights early on in their career. This is a massive risk. I don't think any boxer's ever taken this big of a risk early on in their career. Floyd Mayweather, six opponent. Bobby Gieper, whose record was 19 and eight. Canelo's sixth fight was Juan Hernandez, whose record was two and two. Gervonta Davis's sixth fight was James Frank, whose record was two and eight. Jake Paul's sixth fight is Haseem Rahman Jr., who's 12 and one, who's a heavyweight, a bigger guy than me. So this is what the sport needs. You know, I'm, I, I think these boxers are always trying to pad their records and build up and take their time to get better. That Let's dive into the deep end and make some exciting fights. And I have a responsibility to my fans. Uh, to, to fight, to, to put on a show. They're waiting for me. You know, the whole entire undercard was going to get canceled. Amanda Serrano wasn't going to be able to fight. Ashton H2O Sill, the most valuable promotions, new signee, wasn't going to get his big debut. So I was like, I don't care who it is. Let's find someone. And I'm going to knock him the f- out, put on the show, sell out Madison Square Garden, make it happen. I'm sick and tired of these boxers being scared of everyone, ducking everyone, and not making fights happen. Jake, Jake, I believe um, you've sparred with Haseem Rahman Jr. before, right? Is that, is that right? How did those sparring sessions go? It was, uh, it was a really, really tough session, and it was a war. Um, and he, he's obviously a lot bigger than me, so it was really interesting to deal with. Um, we sparred about 18 months ago and haven't, haven't sparred him since. I'm a way better fighter now. Uh, I'm sure he's a better fighter now, so we're just going to see – who improved more over the past 18 months. Do, do you feel like if you win this fight against Rockman Jr., that some of the criticisms will change, that some people will come around to you in, in the boxing world? 100%, you know, and, and if not, they're just a hater then. You know, at that point, if they're still trying to find a reason uh, to, to not respect what I'm doing, they may not like what I'm doing, but they'll have to respect it uh, because – that's been the number one criticism is fight someone your age, fight someone your size and fight a real boxer. And I'm checking all those things off the list now. Mark, Amanda Serrano reached out to me today and said, why is Jake doing this? Let's just postpone. And I said, all I can tell you is I told him, let's wait. Let's take the time and pick the right opponent to continue on this trajectory that you're on, which is unprecedented, right? For someone with his experience, his age, his level to do what he's doing. Um, but it's, again, his decision and his belief in himself that he can go in there and take on a much bigger man with much more experience and knock him out. The, but believe me, Haseem Rahman Jr. feels like he's going to knock out Jake Paul. The New York State Athletic Commission barely approved this fight. When Nikiza told them, they were like, Haseem has too much experience for Jake. Are you sure about this? And Nikisa had to make him feel comfortable with it. Um, so, you know, the, the odds are stacked against me. Uh, and that's what I love. Uh, I, want, I want to ask you this, Jake, and, and please don't take it the wrong way. I just need to ask this because I'm just curious about your response. You know, this is, this is going to be the toughest test, right, of your, of your career so far. Are you comfortable with, with taking a loss at this point if it does happen? I'm not saying it's going to happen or I'm predicting that, but if it does happen, how does that change things? And would you be comfortable with that, that taking that up? It's, it's not my mindset at all. Next question. That's you know, I, I, I'm a champion. And I always win. That's why I'm here today. No matter what it is, whether it's in the ring or outside the ring, I always win. And, and just so you know, the reason why I ask is because, you know, you guys have done a great job building your boxing career and you've become a big attraction. You weren't probably the highest paid guys, right? And uh, no one really wants to lose. This is a risky fight. Almost some would say maybe like low risk, low reward in some cases, right? For me, though, personally, this fight means a lot and and it's almost proving to myself what I'm capable of. And I see the vision in my head right now of me knocking out this guy who's bigger than me 
who has way more experience than me and putting the whole entire world on notice, it's, it's going to cause an earthquake. You know, August 6th, when Hasim Rockman Jr. hits the ground, it's literally going to create an earthquake and people are going to go, holy, this kid is absolutely insane. And he talks a lot of and we may not like him, but he backs it all up and he's a crazy man. I respect it. That's a great point, Mark, that, you know, one of the risk reward profile things that I mentioned to Jake, it's going to be harder to make some of these exciting crossover fights for him after this, right? When he beats Hasim Rahman Jr., other names that have been mentioned may say, wait a second, I don't think I want to get in the ring with Jake Paul as much as I was claiming I want to. So that, that also impacts that trajectory in a way, but Jake's aware of that and willing to take that on. Just two more for you guys, and maybe this, uh, this is a good one for Nikisa. Amanda Serrano is on, of course, the undercard of this. She's coming on. She's not on the undercard. It's a dual main event. Dual Sorry, headline. dual main event, double main event. Of course, coming off, uh, you know, a huge success a few months ago to MSG against Katie Taylor. Is that rematch uh, going to be coming up possibly if Amanda, Amanda wins this fight? Look, Amanda has not defended her featherweight ba- belts for the past 12 months effectively, right? And maintaining those belts, given the, the boxing philosophy and tradition she comes from, was very important to her. She's fighting her mandatory challenger. She will retain those belts. And then we'll revisit again with Matchroom if it makes sense to have that fight. It certainly didn't when they approached us and said they want to pay her the same amount of money to go to Ireland. They absolutely came back after that and said, oh, we're willing to pay more. But we already moved on and we're focused on Amanda continuing to retain her belts. Amanda has also made it clear she will 100% fight for the same money if Katie Taylor wants to calm down to 126 pounds where Amanda naturally fights at. Absolutely no problem. Got it. And then just last one for Jake. Uh, UFC president Dana White did an interview a few weeks ago, and I think he was asked, you know, if, if Nate Diaz wants to go fight Jake Paul, and, and Dana White said, yeah, he should go fight Jake Paul. They, they, should, they should probably do that fight. What are your thoughts on that? Look, um, I, I'll be Nate Diaz's last fight in the UFC. I'll throw on the MMA gloves and fight him for free as long as Dana White increases and uh, the minimum fighter paid a 50K and gives them health care benefits. And that was my deal. Um, I think the Nate Diaz fight should happen. You know, if it doesn't happen with that offer, then it'll probably happen one day in a boxing match. Um, and it makes a ton of sense. You know, the UFC has been dead this whole entire year. Um, so I get why the fighters are trying to leave. You know, boxing's been on MMA this year. You haven't heard about really any UFC fights and they've all been boring. So I get why Nate Diaz is trying to get out. He's trying to come and face the money man, which is me. So it makes sense. And Dana White, I guess, agrees. Got it. Okay, guys, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the time out. So now it's Jake Paul versus Hasim Rahman Jr. August 6th, New York's Madison Square Garden. Tickets go on sale next Tuesday. Press conference next Tuesday, live on Showtime pay-per-view. Let's go! Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.